everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab, and today we are checking out a 140mm slim fan, specifically the Silverstone Air Slimmer 140 ARGB, and how it compares to other fans on the market. Now, the Air Slimmer 140 ARGB has already won my recent group test that I released a few days ago, but not without a pretty big fight from other fans out there, namely the Arctic P12 Slim and also the Johnsbo HF 1415. So both of those fans putting up a pretty good fight. The Johnsbo also coming in white and it has RGB lighting. The Silverstone available just in black with white fan blades and RGB lighting and also available in just standard black without RGB lighting as well. The Arctic is just basically a standard black fan but is a lot cheaper than the Silverstone. So no real bad 140mm slim fans out there right now. So the Silverstone though just kind of pipping the others to the post both in terms of airflow airflow to, uh, to noise ratio overall and just having the RGB lighting and one of my favorite features is the fact that it comes with all of the screws that you need to attach it to both uh, radiator thread types out there right now specifically M3 and 632 comes with the shortened screws that you need to attach it to those things so a very very good all-round package which, why, which is why it just pipped the other fans to the post but something else that we're going to be comparing it against today is the version 2 of the Arctic P12 Slim. Now, unbeknown to me, I, I actually didn't know that I had the old version of the Arctic. Someone pointed it out on Reddit, and uh, thanks to them for doing that. And I've acquired the Arctic P12 Slim version 2, which has a big ring around the edges of the fan blades. And we're going to see how this new one compares to the Silverstone as well. So this is a specifically a review of the Silverstone fan but we're gonna be adding in some results for the new Arctic uh, P12 Slim version two into the graphs as well. So we're gonna be looking specifically at this fan today, looking at the thread types and the two types of radiators that you will be wanting to look at. We're gonna be looking at the RGB lighting and all the different cables that you get, and then going through all the results and coming to some conclusions at the end. So uh, primarily, if you've already seen the group test, there is some very, very useful stuff in here as, as well today, namely the results compared to the version two of the Arctic fan, um, but definitely check out the group test as well. So I'll go into a bit more detail in certain areas in that recent video, which you can see in a link to in the banner up, up above or in the description down below. So don't forget to like and comment on this video, it just helps punch me through the algorithm. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to have your support. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you are notified when I upload new videos as well. And thanks to Silverstone for sending the fan over and all the links in the description below where you can find this fan and all the other fans in this group test for sale on Amazon. The, they are affiliate links and just help me to run this channel basically and lots of other uh, links in the description down below. You can even buy me a coffee or send my thank send your thanks in other ways such as donating to PayPal etc etc if you like enjoy, enjoy my channel and you found today's video informative. So without further ado let's crack on with the video. So here we are with the Air Slimmer 140 ARGB and we're just going to see what you get in the box. So this is the fan close up and as you can see the frame is black but the blades are actually kind of a translucent white material and that contrasts to the black version, the non-RGB version. Um, both fans though, um, the blades are pretty much identical and they also have this kind of textured surface which I guess is some kind of funky um, aerodynamic tweak that they've done. And uh, the best accessories though of any fan that I've seen or any slim fan that I've seen is that you get both 632 and M3 threads for uh, radiators so and these fan these screws are really really important because the radiators do not come with fans or, or screws for slim fans so you're kind of relying on either sourcing your own and they can be a bit tricky to get hold of uh here in the uk i think bnq does um one type of these i think it's this one the um 632 but the just it's just nice having these included in the box because they're aware that you will probably be fitting these fans to uh, radiators, but it's the radiators don't come with those screws because they're not generally designed to be used with slim fans. So Silverstone has clearly been watching my videos and it's included these uh, because I've mentioned this uh, quite a few times and given extra brownie points to fans that have included the screws. So this is the first slim fan to actually include both thread types on the screws um, to mount it to radiators and the black version includes them as well. So whether you go for the black version or the RGB version, you will get the screws that you need to attach this fan to any radiator you like. So 
Other accessories, obviously standard uh, case screws if you want to mount the fans to your actual case. And then we have some kind of interesting daisy chaining going on here with these cables. So you can either just connect this thing up straight to um, a four pin PWN header. That's actually detachable if you want to uh, do some daisy chaining with other cables. The one thing I would mention though, is that um, I made the mis this mistake earlier. I think this, this cable here was either at uh, attached out of the box or, um, or I, I attached it later, but this cable doesn't actually have the fourth um, runner there for the PWM signal. So I was trying to adjust the fan speed of this thing and uh, it just wasn't working. It just, my software just wasn't picking it up. And then I noticed that there was actually a, um, a cable missing. So if you're just gonna be um, hooking up a single fan or two fans, then uh, what you can do is basically just kind of plug that bit in down there like so and then uh, this cable will actually go into the next fan and then everything's kind of controlled like that and then the same with the RGB lighting you have some daisy chaining going on here so you have the RGB cable here if you want to use it and uh, you have a small cable going in there so I I guess it's nice having these extra cables but the problem is you might lose them or you know the, all these connections are just extra points of failure but I mean they are pretty solid but I would just be very very careful if you're going to be unplugging them and plugging them in regularly I would just kind of plug them in once and just kind of leave it at that so RGB lighting obviously you've got the um the three pins down there and uh that is pretty much it for the Silverstone Air Slimmer 140 ARGB so starting off with two graphs that usually sit at the end of a discussion like this, we've actually brought them forwards because I know that a lot of you won't want to see or read through all of the data that I've gone through over the next few minutes and uh, you just want an at-a-glance view of which fan is actually best. So here we have the Silverstone Air Slimmer 140 ARGB still sitting at the top of the graph. It's pretty expensive though, which is why it doesn't get a particularly good value score at the bottom. So that value score is absolutely dominated by the Arctic P14 Slim um, and very good reason for that it's by far the cheapest fan on test and it also performs really really well so the overall score though takes in takes into account other issue uh, or other factors such as how flexible the fan is in terms of maximum airflow um, any extra features it has obviously the Silverstone sitting at the top of the graph has um, screw types for both types of radiators you might want to fit it to it's got RGB lighting and it has that um, extra peak airflow to um, to offer up as well as um, some very very high marks in lots of other graphs as well so the arctic p14 slim pwm pst version 2 though does score a couple of extra points for better performance compared to the original fan it's quieter it offers more airflow at uh, specific noise levels and is generally a better fan thanks to the tweaking that arctic has done the john's bow um, pretty much sitting exactly where it was in the group test um, but now kind of level with the arctic rather than just slightly above it in terms of the overall score because i've tweaked things and uh, added everything up again based on where they sit in the new graphs so the john's bow is still a pretty good fan um, especially if you need a white slim fan that also offers rgb lighting um, it's a pretty decent fan overall and you won't be disappointed with it the original arctic fan then i'm um, sitting at the bottom of the graph because of that lower performance So moving on to our core data now then, and we first of all have the airflow results at specific RPMs. And uh, as we can see here, if we look at the full speed graph first, um, the Arctic P14 Slim version two does uplift the airflow at the full speed, uh, which is exactly the same RPMs for both fans. It does see an, a fairly significant uplift. However, it's still not enough to match the John's Bow or the Silverstone Air Slimmer, uh, both of which offer significantly more airflow. Now, dipping back to the um, lower RPMs, and uh, we still have a consistently higher airflow coming from the version two. So uh, when Arctic is saying you get the same airflow with both fans, I would probably disagree with that because you're getting significantly higher airflow with the new fan. Um, again, though, at 800 RPM, 1000 RPM and 1500 RPM, it's not quite able to match the uh, higher airflow fans on test. So moving on to the noise results now then, and at full speed, we have the Arctic P14 Slim version two, uh, shaving a few decibels off the P14 Slim PWM. Now the human ear generally perceives a halving or doubling of uh, noise 
every 10 decibels. So going down by three is generally not um, shaving off a whole load of noise in terms of what your ear can perceive, but it is still significant and is definitely picked up by my sound meter. So the new fan design, much, much quieter than the previous Arctic model and the uh, John's Bow and Silverstone way up there with 51 and 54 decibels each. 1500 RPM and it's pretty much the same for the higher airflow fans and again the Arctic version 2 is shaving off a few decibels off the um, the older model and uh, 1000 RPM still the same way round at uh, 1000 RPM and 800 RPM for the two higher airflow fans the John's Bow and the Silverstone and here, the difference between the version 1 and version 2 of the P14 Slim from Arctic becomes less significant and is indistinguishable with my sound meter at 800 RPM. Moving on to the temperature results now then, and we have the Arctic version 2 outperforming the original version of the P14 Slim in every single test and by quite a significant margin at 1000 RPM as well. However, it's the Silverstone and John's Bow that offer the lowest temperatures thanks to their higher airflow although it didn't they didn't have it all their own way because the arctic p14 slim did manage to match the silverstone at 1500 rpm and was never more than a couple of degrees away now this is where it gets really really interesting because what we're doing here is actually focusing on the noise that each fan produces and limiting the airflow in accordance to the noise that it's making. So essentially a noise normalized test uh, fixing each fan at a specific noise level. In this case 45 dBA and the reason why we've got 45 dBA is because uh, this was actually the maximum noise level that the Arctic uh, version 2 produced. Now the other fan, the older Arctic, managed to get up to 47 but uh, unfortunately with this fan we are limited to 45 dBA whereas the other fans are actually trailing off at around 45 dBA. So a bit limited on the, um, the testing that we could do here but it's very very significant nonetheless. The Arctic P14 Slim offering a huge amount more airflow at 45 dBA than any other fan on test even compared to the original fan. So sticking at the same noise level, it's massively outperforming both the original P14 Slim, the John's Boat HF 1415 and the Silverstone. And we see a similar result with the CPU temperature as well. So the RPM readings, yeah, I mean, they're an easy way of uh, seeing how efficient is each fan is at a particular rotation. But in terms of your eyes and your ears, the only thing that you're going to be noticing is... Uh, what the TP, what the CPU temperature is in whatever software you're reading it, and also the noise that's uh, that's being shoved uh, over towards your ears. So you're not really going to be looking at the RPM of the fan and being irritated or pleased by that. Um, you're far more likely to be um, irritated or pleased by the noise that that fan is producing. So that's what we're looking at here, and the 45 dBA CPU temperature for each fan. Um, has the Arctic P14 Slim at the top, shaving a degree off the P14 Slim version 1, and uh, 2 degrees better than the Silverstone, and 3 degrees better than the John's Bow. Moving on to the subjective sound quality then, and again, we've got pretty similar results for both of the Arctic fans. The uh, Spinning at the, the exact same speeds, you're getting um, pretty much the same airflow at those speeds, maybe slightly more with the P14 Slim, but it doesn't seem to produce that much more noise as a result. So uh, pretty clunky way of doing things. It is subjective, uh, but it is basically what my ears are telling me in terms of the actual sound quality. So it's not to be confused with the actual noise level. It's the quality of the fan noise, whether there's a droning noise or clicking or anything like that. And the Arctic scores pretty highly here, followed by the Silverstone and the John's Bow, which just had slightly more airflow and slightly more tone to the noise, um, finally with the John's Bow with a definite tone. Um, but again, it's still pretty uh, scoring pretty highly with 8 out of 10 there. So we have two interesting graphs to look at uh, before we round off here. And first of all, we have the airflow and noise quality to price ratio. So that's the fan on the left. So basically here it's the airflow divided by the um, noise quality score and then um, basically pitching that against the price of each fan. So as we, do, as we would expect, the Arctic fans are going to do particularly well here because they're just a lot cheaper than the other two fans, but also they do offer a pretty good uh, noise quality as well, plus um, reasonable, if not um, if not amazing airflow, except if you noise normalize everything and then they really, really do perform well. So equally, very, very high scores here for both Arctic fans and the Arctic 
version 2 performing really really well the john's bow and the silverstone obviously a lot more expensive than the arctic and um, generally not performing quite as well when it comes to noise quality or the airflow that you get a bit at a particular noise level so off over onto the right then we have the airflow to noise quality ratio so that's disregarding anything to do with price and purely down to the amount of airflow that you get for the noise produced. So here we have the Silverstone winning out. Um, it produces a lot more airflow than the Arctic and uh, this is basically where the higher airflow fans are going to do um, are going to do slightly better. So the Arctic, yep, yeah, it's a lot quieter, but it really doesn't produce that much airflow at all um, compared to the other fans. Still enough to um, pump air through a radiator and keep a processor cool though. So moving on to our final graph now then, and if you're primarily concerned about getting the most airflow for the least money, then this is the graph for you. So this is essentially how many dollars you'll have to spend to get one meter second of airflow um, according to my test system. So obviously not straight out of the fan, but we've actually got it coming out the other end of a radiator, so it takes into account static pressure as well. But in general, if you want the most airflow for the least cost, you wanna to look towards the top of this graph. So we have the Arctic P14 Slim, uh, version 2 at the top producing even more airflow for the same price than the original p14 slim and we have the john's bow coming up in third place uh, with a reasonably high price uh, compared to the arctic but generally performing very very well in terms of airflow um, the more expensive fan on test is the silverstone air slim at 140 argb uh, so the much much higher price than the other fans on test means that even though it has the most airflow in most of the tests the higher price means that it actually scores the worst here in terms of costing you $13 per meter second of airflow. So what do we make of the Silverstone Air Slimmer 140 ARGB then? Well, this thing is still probably just about my favorite fan here, um, just because of the overall package. The Arctic is undoubtedly king if you're looking to get maximum airflow at specific noise levels, but it doesn't quite match the Silverstone's peak airflow. In fact, it sits well below it if you put both fans at full speed. And I just like having that flexibility from a fan which is uh, basically going to be sat in a pretty tight, pretty cramped build, might be strapped to a radiator as well. And I just like having that ability to ramp up the cooling if I need it. Because with mini ITX PCs, especially if you're liquid cooling them, you never quite know how things are going to turn out in terms of airflow. And I just like having the flexibility to punch a lot of air through a radiator. And it's still a very, very quiet fan overall. The Arctic, maybe slightly better noise quality. It is very, very quiet, produces more airflow at a specific noise level, but it can only reach up to about 1.2, 1.3 meters a second of airflow, whereas this thing sits a lot higher than that. Now, you also get RGB lighting or the option to as well. And there is a non-RGB lighting version, which is available um, for, for a little bit less. I'd also consider the John's bow as well, especially if you've got a white build. It's nearly as good as the Silverstone. Doesn't include all the screws you need to attach it to a radiator though, which, which is where the Silverstone gets a couple of extra bounty points. So Silverstone S Slimmer 140 ARGB, still just about the best overall package out there, but the John's bow and the Arctic especially are better in a couple of areas. So you want to check out the all the results if you haven't done so uh, yet in the rest of this video or just check out my recent group test but just take note that the results that you saw today are including the version 2 of the arctic p14 slim as well which the group test that i did didn't unfortunately so that's it from me today thanks to silverstone for sending over the um, air slimmer 140 argb check out all the links in the description below about where to buy all these things and other stuff as well and don't forget to like comment and subscribe as well and i will be back very very soon Thank you.